Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to present uh, in this conference. Um, I am Mohammad Saber Hossein. I am a graduate research assistant at NextGen Biomedical Informatics Center, University of Missouri, Columbia. Uh, <clears throat> today, I'll be presenting deployment of I2P2 on ACT ontology in the AWS cloud. Uh, the University of Missouri NextGen BMI team has integrated I2B2 uh, uh, with uh, University of uh, Missouri Health System, and uh, we have deployed the I2B2 as a Docker containerized application in the AWS cloud. We have mapped our de-identified PicoNet common data with uh, ACT version 2 ontology using multi-fact tables. Uh, we have integrated uh, UM uh, Shibboleth authentication system with the I2B2, our I2B2 host 46 million facts for 2.2 million patients of uh, UM Sarnar Millennium data. Uh, and currently we are working on mapping, uh, mapping PicoNet CDM with ACT version 4 ontology. Uh, and we are also developing Snowflake database support for I2B2 cells. Now we have a uh, uh, running uh, I2, uh, uh, I2B2 uh, with Snowflake as a backend database. <coughs> Now I, I, I will uh, I'll be uh, sharing our experience uh, in uh, in this integration process. Hope uh, other institution will find it more reliable and faster in uh, integration pr process. So, <clears throat> from previous study, we know that um, I2B2 platform can be run as a Docker contain uh, containerized applications. The major components of I2B2, the web server, application server, and database server um, can be implemented as, uh, as uh, three different uh, containers. Um, the containers can be, um, the, the containers are communicating uh, through uh, virtual Docker network uh, hosted by a server, and the end users can uh, access the I2B2 <coughs> uh, using, uh, from the web browser, uh, uh, over the internet. Accessing the I2B2 over the internet also brings some challenges, uh, such as we want to make sure uh, it is uh, uh, highly secured, scalable, and available to the end users, and we have tried to solve those challenges using <coughs> following AWS cloud features, uh, services. Uh, we have used uh, AWS Elastic Container Services and Relational Database to build and run the uh, run I2B2 without thinking about the servers. Uh, we have created VPC subnets and security groups to ensure security of the application. We have used auto-scaling Elastic Load Balancer uh, to ensure scalability of the application. And we also used CloudFormation and Code Deploy to create faster and easy deployment process. So at first, we have containerized the I2B2 web client and web server uh, server and run those as a um, uh, service in the Elastic Container Services. Um, Elastic Container Services are uh, cloud-based and fully managed container orchestration service. We can run ap uh, application without uh, uh, <laughs> having to configure or maintain the infrastructure. It supports uh, AWS Fargate, a serverless computing engine. Uh, it reduces overhead of uh, 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 maintaining the servers, uh, and it um, it uh, it ensures applications availab availability. We can uh, deploy application in multiple region. Uh, it manages scalability of the application. Uh, it can be scaled up or down based on uh, provision. Uh, Allocation resources of allocation resources. Uh, it has native integration with a wide range of AWS services such as uh, uh, virtual private cloud, Elastic Load Balancer. Uh, and, uh, we can integrate with uh, existing tools such as uh, such as uh, CIC. Uh, we can uh, integrate with uh, CI/CD pipeline, and we also. Uh, uh, isolated the uh, containerization process of uh, um, uh, relational database, and we uh, used uh, uh, Amazon <coughs> RDS, uh, which is a relational database services, uh, uh, is fully managed. Uh, it uh, helps us to, uh, uh, it makes simpler to operate 
and the setup and scale database instances. It removes uh, inefficient and time-consuming uh, database administrative tasks. Uh, it supports popular database engines such as uh, Oracle, SQL Server, PostgreSQL, etc. Uh, to run I2B2 as uh, AWS ECS service, uh, we build uh, Docker images from uh, I2B2 web client and web server source code uh, by following installation guidelines. Then we upload a Docker images in uh, AWS ECR, uh, which is a private re repository. It stores, encrypts, and uh, manages uh, Docker images. Using those uh, <coughs> Docker um, images, we have created the task definition. Uh, the, the task definitions are uh, a simple uh, text file in JSON format. We um, uh, it describes one or more containers that makes up the application. Uh, we can also define uh, uh, we can also uh, uh, define uh, environment variable port mapping uh, uh, associated with each container. Then we uh, have created ECS cluster uh, where we can run I2B2 service as a task um, and uh, in the ECS cluster. So uh, this is the overall network uh, infrastructure of I2B2 um, in the AWS cloud. Uh, at first, we have created the VPC uh, using two uh, uh, private and public subnets with associated routing tables, internet gateway, network gateway in two uh, different availability zones. Um, uh, VPC allow us to use AWS resources uh, in a virtual network. Then we created two security groups for application and databases. Uh, security groups act as a firewall uh, for associated containers, and it also um, control inbound and outbound traffic um, to the container instance level. Uh, then uh, we created application load balancer with a target group and SSL certificate. Uh, the Application uh, load balancer uh, distributes uh, uh, tra um, the network traffic to the con associated container level. It also uh, responsible for SSL offloading of uh, uh, HTTP request. Um, then we have deployed our I2B2 application and database as ECS Fargate service and RDS database in the private subnet uh, respectively. The Application and the database are in the private subnet, which means they don't have uh, any pub, uh, access to the public uh, internet. Uh, only resources from the uh, from uh, the running from uh, uh, private subnets can access those resources. So we have used uh, to uh, to co uh, communicate with outside of the VPC. We have uh, used uh, network gateway and app, uh, network gateway and the application load balancer. Uh, after ensuring uh, the uh, deployment of our I2B2 in a, in a secured environment, we have prepared and loaded our PicoNet data in the AWS. Uh, since uh, our database in, uh, in the private subnet, uh, we had to run some uh, additional services to um, uh, done the ETL process. Uh, so at first, uh, we have containerized the uh, data install, uh, I2B2 data installer. Um, and run this uh, the, that one as as a Fargate service, and uh, we loaded the initial uh, schema and the database required for I2B2. Uh, then we have mapped our PicoNet uh, de-identified PicoNet common data model uh, and created uh, the fa multi uh, fa fact tables and the dimension tables. Then we ran uh, AWS Glue jobs to uh, load direct uh, direct uh, load the data directly from Snowflake to so RDS. Uh, the AWS Glue jobs are Spark jobs that can read uh, data in parallel. And we also have a PG admin web client because our uh, to um, uh, it, it, it is acting as a uh, query editor. We can uh, to visualize or maintain the project management cells. This is how uh, we have mapped our PicoNet CDM with ACP ontology. Uh, we have created a couple of fact tables uh, like diagnosis fact, procedure facts, medication facts, and lab facts. Um, and thus, uh, so, uh, our uh, and for each tables we have our uh, uh, source uh, PicoNet table, which are diagnosis, procedures, prescribing, 
and left resolution. This is how uh, we have constructed uh, the concept codes for each fact table. Uh, for example, for diagnosis, uh, we have used DX type and DX column to uh, and mapped with uh, corresponding ontologies. And uh, this is uh, this is how, how we have uh, mapped our re lab results uh, with ITB2 fact tables. Uh, like we, uh, we have uh, mapped lab link with concept CD, result modifier, uh, result number, or result unit with corresponding uh, lab fact columns. Uh, currently, uh, we are working on uh, uh, Snowflake uh, database support for I2B2, uh, and we also uh, we do have a uh, functional I2B2 running with Snowflake database, uh, Snowflake as backend database. Uh, um, it, uh, it helps us to uh, uh, now we don't have uh, need to uh, perform ETL process in uh, loading our MU Picornet data. Uh, it also reduces the cost and storage uses of external database uh, hosted in AWS RDS. Um, uh, and the I2B2 queries uh, running, uh, executing uh, much uh, faster with promising performance. Uh, a little bit about Snowflake is uh, Snowflake uh, is a data platform and, and as cloud service, uh, it organizes data in its uh, internal optimized and complex co uh, columnar format. Uh, it provides faster query processing by using multiple virtual houses, automatic query optimization, cluster tuning, ma uh, micro partitioning, automatic clustering and uh, reclustering of tables. And uh, JDBC driver can be used to connect Snow to Snowflake. Uh, these are our team. Thank you. Uh, we do have the Docker uh, instructions, but uh, these uh, these uh, images are in our private repository. But we can share if anyone wants. And uh, uh, we do have our CI/CD pipeline, so uh, you, uh, any uh, organization can uh, deploy the whole network infrastructure in one single command, and also deploy the application in that uh, network. Yeah. Um, really, really nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, it will be. Uh, it will really uh, fasten the development and uh, maintaining process of I T V two. Yeah, uh, so uh, th basically the, the, uh, it was uh, uh, taken from a source, like the previous work on I2B2. Yeah. So th that was our uh, uh, starting point. So but later you sort of held that. Yeah. That's very valuable because putting it outside of Docker yeah. is yeah. Awesome. Then we used a standalone database in the AWS RDS. Huh. So, so Basically, we just uh, uh, read the source code and mo modified w where uh, we have dependencies with drivers. And now uh, we have functional ITB2 uh, running with Snowflake as backend database. So, um, Currently, we are not uh, running any test cases, but uh, we, uh, we, we do have a production I2B2 uh, with uh, PostgreSQL and we uh, in production environment, and we 
do have our uh, IPv2 with Snowflake in dev environment. So we are uh, we have the same data. So we are uh, currently just running into different platform and checking the sounds uh, or the uh, other uh, uh, tools uh, such as breakdowns or timelines, etc. Uh, till now, we uh, uh, didn't have proof, but uh, we are uh, looking forward to add more. Uh, we are uh, we will be uh, covering more uh, scenarios. And now we uh, only mapped uh, these tables, and we uh, also mapped the values for the lab results. That's all we did. So it depends on uh, how large uh, the our uh, instances. Like if we, uh, it usually takes to uh, takes half a day to complete the whole uh, whole ETL ETL process for our data. We can uh, increase the computational uh, engines, and it, it could be faster. Days. It depends on our uh, relocation allocation of uh, resources. Sorry? To extend the query builder. Yeah. Report. Yeah. We, we have forked from the I2P2 repository and we are currently working on. Surely, thanks.